so I'm here at LAX and it's 5 in the morning. <laughs> um, I don't actually think that I went to sleep maybe for like 20 minutes or so. I just stayed up all night packing um, with tour guide <laughs> and my flight leaves at like 6.30 or something like that so we'll see. I just checked into the hotel room. I'm freaking exhausted. I think I may have lost one of my earrings on the plane. But it's all good. We're gonna see if we can find it. Anyways, um, waiting for Sophia and Carmel to show up. Probably gonna take a nap for a little bit and relax. But now we're gonna head out to the Liquid Lounge to listen to some live music and hopefully get food and drink. My name is Danan. Hey everybody, Sophia Mojo here. And I go by the name of D Lyric. I started singing, my mother says, probably as soon as I started talking. And um, my dad was a singer. Honestly, I didn't think that I was gonna really start off being an artist. I really just love composing music, just love writing. I started off my first instrument, trumpet, uh, when I was like in middle school. So I've been performing my whole life ever since I can remember. And looking up and hearing my dad sing, and he had a, a voice that I still, to this day, haven't heard. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of knew early that I wanted to have that, or give people that same feeling that he gave me when I was a little girl. I do remember one specific time, and I think this might have been my first solo in a choir. Mandatory class we had to take in choir, mm -hmm. and then I raised my hand during the solo, Everybody raised their hand. I was the first person to audition. Mm -hmm. And when I auditioned, everybody pointed at me like, yeah, he should do it. And that's when I found out she got to sing. Motor actually heard me singing. And she came out the house, you know, and she was just like, wow, you know, you have such an amazing voice to be such, you know, a young girl. I was about 12 years old. And um, I had the verse down, but it was the ad-libs that I didn't really know how to do and I had to kind of find a way to create these ad-libs for this you know powerful gospel song and my mom I went to my mom and she actually helped me map out the runs I the was the one underage got snuck in the back I had to stay in the back but I just remember them dressing me up to look kind of grown just in case anybody 
ask any questions. Mm -hmm. You had the makeup on, the eyelashes. I had all that on, and then when I look at that picture now, I was like, I looked a hot mess. However, it was my first experience really seeing how people felt about me as a vocalist outside my family because my sisters and brothers would be like, girl, shut up, you sing too much, you know, they wouldn't hear it. So, my brother Calvin, there as we go. were growing up, right, <laughs> you feel me? He used to freestyle all the time, and while we would be in the car and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, he'll be rapping a lot, and my dad would always be like, go, you know what I mean, like freestyle. That's when I really got my first feeling of being on stage, and it, at that point, I was, and still, more concerned about how the crowd felt. Well, my goal when I perform is really to give the audience an experience. I believe I do that. I can't even take credit for it. I think that's just a God-given ability, to be honest. Just energy that I have, and I feel like I get a chance to just put that out there on the stage, especially when I'm hosting, like a, sec a second away from, from performing and doing music. Like, if I'm hosting and I'm trying to get the crowd hyped, then mm -hmm. I just like interacting with people. Like, I just, and I don't know, I, I, I know what I've watched. I know what I've been at shows. And I've just been like, man, I wish this host would really, like, turn us up. Or I wish she would really connect with us, talk to us or something, you know what I mean? It's so surreal to hear the crowd singing my lyrics. But as far as performing, I just, I just love being on that stage and put the mic out towards them <laughs> and they was right there with me i have <laughs> videotape and their response their energy like it took me back and after that night everyone was like mojo mojo <laughs> mojo and and that was actually just confirmation for mm -hmm. me as as a person as an artist that um this is something that i was born to do this is not just a hobby. It's not something that I'll do until it's just it <laughs> and will always be. Like, ever since I found out and saw certain reactions that people have have had to my music, mm -hmm. I just crave for that reaction. Like, I realized that God actually has called me to this point. Like, this is my purpose because um, he's given me just the ability and the, the, the skill and um, the drive, the passion to use music as a platform to encourage people, to mm -hmm. empower people. Um, I would say my top three musical influences are... So I just listen to other people like Brandy and I like to listen to Whitney Houston, Celine Dion. I would say our Bob, Bob Mar Robert Marley, <laughs> our Kelly. I studied obviously Michael Jackson, you know, you get the Shaka Khan and just the way they mm -hmm. command the audience. I like I like Tupac a lot because of his content and, and what he's talking about. But I liked their vocal clarity and their precision. So mm -hmm. I studied that. Mm -hmm. A little bit about my music. Um, I'm all about positivity and consciousness, I'm trying to raise the consciousness and, and, and get good vibes out there. When I'm when I got that mic in my hand, I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. I say what? And when I make a connection with the audience in that way, they know I'm not playing and they tune into what I'm saying, what I'm singing. That's when we create the Mojo experience. Um, I'm all about just human rights and animal rights. I'm a vegan, you know, so I believe that, you know, I believe in Ahimsa. Uh, I'm not into religion, but I am very spiritual. And mm -hmm. Ahimsa means no harm, to do no harm. So I don't think we should be hurting anyone, you know, any creature, you know, living creature that can love and move, you know, not just humans, but I think that extends to all God's creatures. And I do try to, you know, create lyrics and work with beats and music and production that allows for them to, you know, fill my sound and my rhythms, but, mm -hmm. and, and even what I'm talking about, the subject matter, but I realize that when I'm there, unless I connect with them, unless I make them feel like they can relate to me, um, physically as being in front of them, um, you know, I'm gonna lose them. I go against the grains a lot. They don't wanna hear that in the industry, you know. That's not really radio friendly music, talking about what's going on in the world and, and saying positive stuff, but that's my goal. You know, even if I gotta come at an underground angle, that's fine with me. I just wanna get my message out there and change the frequency a little bit. And I wanted my voice to be just as clear when I sang, and I wanted to hit those notes with precision. I wanted to, um, 
make sure that I always convey the emotion in the lyrics that I was singing. Placement of the lyrics is very important for all of those things. Karen, Karen was talking about that today. Karen Marie Mason, very deep lady. Um, she was saying, you know, the spirit sometimes has to guide you with music. Well, not sometimes, always really. Um, what did DJ say? He said, um, when 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 the, the melody is God speaking, you know, I was like, damn, that's deep. <laughs> that's what, how it happens. It just comes to you, you know. You want them to feel you. Give that expression of that note. You know what I'm saying? I use a lot of my hands to lose my eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I like to smile. I like to, you know, if it's a seductive song, you gotta give seduction. You know, if it's a sexy song, you gotta give sexy. So take the hobby and turn it into craft through hard work and dedication. Is what I'm really trying to say. Really, just try to stay as authentic as possible and what that means to me is to not try to sound like anyone else mm -hmm. but to actually create the mojo sound whatever that is and what what it is for me is soul but look check it out my name is d that lyric i hope you hear it and you can find me at written by dana well um currently right now i have my single heart wins that's on uh iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music. Uh, you can actually go directly to my website, which is sophiamojo.com. Produced by multi-platinum producer Rick Rude. I love him. Please check it out. You get some time on uh, grantsing.com. From Lago, a Lago. They train to go. Lago, Maryland. M-O-J-O-M-O-J-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-